Warning. This is a giant wall of text that nobody's gonna read. I might even hide secrets in there, you'll never know. Watch at your own risk. Sup morons, my name's Windette, and welcome back to Idiot Central. Today, I'm here to tell you a story where I spent 10 straight hours of my life doing nothing but play worldless. I bought this game the second it became available on Steam, and do I regret it? No, this game fucking slaps! And if you lot haven't installed the free demo by the time I'm done yelling at you, then I suck at my job and should take a very long walk straight off the nearest cliff. But this wouldn't be a Windet video without the due formalities, so... <clears throat> First of all, context. Hi, I'm Windet. And welcome back to my channel, where I bully you mindless idiots into getting games that will sap you of all your free time, and force you to come to terms with your unavoidable, crippling, and complete lack of skill. Today, on Explained and Insults, I'm forcing you morons into a game that requires complex platforming, a perfect sense of timing, and the use of a functioning brain. So in other words, you lot are fucked! Part 1! Okay, so what am I getting you morons into? Worldless is a Metroidvania, and its one singular purpose is to make you want to curl up into a ball and fucking die. Uh, wow, what the- what the fuck? Yes, more than you do already. This game pulls absolutely no punches and makes you thoroughly aware of just how useless you actually are by first giving you a simple tutorial and then pummeling you into the fucking ground without any warning. Spoiler alert, this happens a lot. Okay, off to a good start. Your one singular saving grace is that despite your ludicrous incompetence, you lot can't die! What, did you think that that would make the game easy? <laughs> As if! Now the game doesn't have to hold back! Your body might be unbreakable, but your self-esteem fucking ain't. Who's gonna come and save your ass when your one method of progress is being barricaded by a fucking moth? But of course, it doesn't stop there. Because if the player being immortal wasn't enough on its own, guess what? So are the fucking monsters! This game doesn't work like most Metroidvanias, where genocide is the simple solution to all of your problems. No, like I warned earlier, this game requires a functioning brain. Part two! You guys ever seen Pokemon before, with the weakness charts and whatever the hell? Yeah, well, forget all that crap. This shit's way cooler! With Worldless, you're basically playing a real-time rhythm game where every action has an equal opposite reaction, or whatever the fuck you morons are doing. Fighting has two phases, attack and defend. For attacks, there's elemental attacks, ranged attacks, melee attacks, and- OH GOD, WHAT THE ACTUAL f Basically, there's a lot of variation, and you need to know the appropriate response to everything before getting your teeth kicked in by fucking Satan. Uh, what? Uh, hello? Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior? I, uh, uh... No? That's alright. I'll send you to him directly. Just like you, enemies have elemental or physical attacks. Vertical lines for one, horizontal for the other. Your job is to block the right attack with the right shield. Simple. Oh. Great. What the f*** do I do here?! Ah! And if all this somehow wasn't enough, guess what?! Even if you do manage to kill them, congratulations! Now they're just... Sag. And very much still alive, so... How do we kill it? You don't. This is my favorite combat mechanic in the game. While your teeny brains might think that killing is the best way to handle an immortal foe, not quite sure how you managed to figure that one out, the best and only way to finish a fight... <laughs> absorption is the process of eating your entire opponent while they're still fucking breathing. <laughs> Dealing damage raises the absorption meter, and taking damage lowers it. So, avoid that part. Stupid. Once you reach the absorption threshold, press appropriate keybind, and then match the sequence. X, Y, fuck, fuck, yes, fuck, fuck! Reaching 100% on the absorption meter will only reveal the first one or two inputs. A little over that will reveal the first three. Nearly to the top will reveal all four, and only if you've completely maxed out the bar can you absorb the enemy without any resistance. Getting an enemy to 100% absorption is technically always enough to suck the fucking life out of them. Well, provided they don't just tell you to fuck off. All you have to do is guess the right sequence before time runs out. Once you've successfully eradicated them from existence, congratulations! You get... Themes. 
I have no idea what this does. Absorbing an enemy will give you skill points that you can spend on obtaining the literal might of Zeus. Skill points grant you powers and abilities that make fights a lot more interesting. For instance, did you know that wind enemies are weak to lightning? No. Or that fire enemies are weak to ice? See where the Pokemon analogy was coming from? Sometimes enemies have a little gimmick to get past. Like this little prick who takes zero fucking damage. How the hell am I supposed to beat you if you keep pretending I don't exist? To contrast this, some are just lying on the ground in a depressed heap waiting to get fucking eaten. And some of them just... They just... They... they Please stop fucking dying. Okie dokie, class. Looks like you're having a little trouble absorbing them pesky enemies before they kick the bucket, but don't you worry. Good ol' Wimby is here to help straighten things out. First, take note of the symbol next to the absorption bar. Dealing enough of that type of damage will break the meter and cause you to deal double absorption until your turn ends. More absorption damage means you're more likely to finish the fight the way you want to, instead of having to come back later. But Wimby... I hear you ask. What if the meter's locked? Just beat the shit out of them, that'll fix it! Part 3! Now, this game's combat feels fucking sick. It hits like a truck, is satisfying to master, and the visuals are fucking spectacular. Like when you hit this asshole with the biggest know-you in existence and impale her ass on her own fucking spear. But this is a Metroidvania, so you know there's platforming. This game might be brutal, and I mean borderline barbaric. Look at this! I just snapped this guy's head off like it was a fucking twig. And what the heck did this guy do? He's just sitting there, minding his own business, only to get a sword shoved straight between his fucking eye sockets. Regardless of how sad savage this game can be, all of the exploration happens through platforming. Either by finding new abilities that get you to places you couldn't before, or just by getting good and not walking straight off the nearest cliff for the fifth fucking time. Exploration in this game is an experience both satisfying and wondrous. Every environment is fucking gorgeous, from the trees to the lakes to the upwards falling... rain? What? Nah. There's no shortage of visual beauty, and it's only helped by the tranquil and warm soundtracks that play in the background. These areas are amazing to adventure, but of course, that would all mean nothing if not for the fucking movement. This shit feels insane, from dashing across platforms to jumping off walls or sprinting on fucking water. Every movement feels so satisfying, and the complex and evolving environments only help to improve on this. Careful. Careful. Ah, fuck, come on, you scared him. From comboing flip switches to bouncing off walls or finding shortcuts that absolutely shouldn't exist, there's seemingly no end to just how creative you can get, and this game lets you get away with so much just for using your head. Well, you know. Perhaps not when you lot seem to have an obsession with killing yourselves over and over. Look, I won't beat around the bush. This is one of the most incredible games I've ever had the pleasure of exploring. And it's all just fucking shapes! I, I can't- I just- What?! Also, would you like to be let in on a little secret? It's a slight spoiler, so let me know if you don't want any, okay? Skip to this point to avoid it. We good? Uh, okay, cool. Cause you can run on the fucking walls! Please enjoy taking your time just exploring. It's well worth your time and such a brilliant change of pace from the ridiculously difficult combat. But there's always a catch, isn't there? And in this game, it's the fucking map? Where the hell am I? How did I get here? Have I been here before? Okay, I've definitely been here before. Ooh, what's this? Wait, where am I? Hello? Hello? Something about this doesn't seem right. Okay, yeah, I'm completely lost. Guess I'll just go back the way I came. Oh god, what the fuck is that? The map in this game sucks, but only if you have less than three brain cells. This is the main hub. Might not look like much, but if we start off by this tree thingy here and run as far right as we can... Uh, yeah, it's just a big loop. Each of these constellation-looking thingies are a different area on the map. They're just... Twimsted. Once you realize that each one of these shapes correlates to each one of these, you're pretty much halfway there. But there's just one problem. You'd think that walking clockwise around the hub room would rotate the map clockwise, right? So why the fuck am I here? What, is direction really that fucking complicated? Hi, Editor Wimby here. Turns out that this is all because of a tiny issue with perspective that the devs perhaps hadn't thought of. If you imagine you're walking around the map hub as if you're on the inside of the circle, which would make perfect fucking sense because it's not like all the constellations branch fucking in, then the rotation of the hub makes no sense at all. But apparently the devs decided that you were actually standing on the outside of the circle, like out here somewhere. So moving to the right, Right will actually send you in the other direction. I guess fuck me and anyone that thinks with common fucking sense. Aside from that, the only thing that isn't immediately obvious is that just like the main hub, the entire map is cyclical. 
Wait, you don't know what that word means, do you? Basically, if I'm standing here, at the very far right of the map, as far right as you can go, and travel even further to the right, now I'm... here, at the very far... left. What? Essentially, anytime you see these solid lines become dotted and broken up, that's a screen transition. They always lead to these black and white endless void area thingies and connect one part of the map to another. Which also means that yes, the very top of the map also connects to the very bottom. You're welcome. Part 4! Alright, I'm still struggling with an addiction to this game, so I'll keep this last section short, sweet, and simple. Here are some helpful tips to give you the best experience in Worldless. First up, perfect parries. Just like in Hollow Knight, Dead Cells, Elden Ring, or any game that has a combat system, this game has a parry mechanic, and it's indispensable. Psst, that means it's important. I told you to block magic attacks with a magic shield and physical attacks with a physical one, but what if you press the block button right as an attack hits you? Oh, and it gets better. Because it also happens to be the only way to defend against this fucking shit! Ah! Parries block everything in this game, and especially during the harder fights, it's the difference between living and- Okay, it's still living, it's just a lot less fun. Ah! The only difference between parries and blocks is timing, which just takes practice. Yeah, fuck me, you guys are gonna suck at this. Next up on my list of helpful things to stop you idiots from hating yourselves like you do every day are map stones. Your character comes with a little hum. You use it to interact with basically everything in this game, and at some point or another, you'll stumble across something that looks like this. You know, it's important because there's light somehow radiating up from the fucking ground. To make sure I'm not spoiling too much here, each of these symbols is either a hum, a rest, or a different type of hum that you lot don't have access to yet. Don't question it, you'll know what I'm talking about once you get it, trust me, it's not fucking subtle. Do the hums and rests in the correct order to complete the map stone and it'll reveal whatever stuff you're missing in that area. Once you've completed all the map stones, there's another secret waiting for you inside. I will not spoil any further. And as for my final piece of wisdom, everything that I just showed you, from the fights to the abilities to the sick ass parkour, that's only half of what this game has to offer. Alright, that's it. This video wasn't sponsored, I just really fucking like the game. Now go get the demo, it's free and fun, I've left the link in the description. Also, for all you actual masochists out there, at the very end of the game, Worldless has its own equivalent of the Path of Pain, Absolute Radiance, and Pantheon 5. Which I think is really cool and also makes me want to fucking kill myself. Anyways, bye!